going? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it is. It's going live now. Somehow, I think I have my finger there. Ah. If I'm online, I don't know what we I'm doing, online. guys. All right. So you can use this little loop here to hold. Oh, okay. But you can't really touch the buttons on the other side. Here's the yeah. button. Here's the loop. Will that help you? Yeah. Alrighty, Much man. better. Go up a little. There. Hello, Homer. I think I'd like to have you make me some lasagna today. I surely would. Would I? Oh, would I? <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, this here's Homer the Homesteader live from Aunt Connie and Uncle Steve, the mechanical genius's house here in Bolingbrook, Illinois. Today we're going to make a little bit of a lasagna. Well, I'm going to make a little bit of lasagna. Oh, Horatio is safe and sound back at the homestead, hopefully watching the show. But, uh... I went to the casino today with Aunt Connie, Uncle Steve, and Ma Homesteader. Spending a little bit of a Mother's Day weekend here with these three mothers. And uh, the peanut gallery is supposed to laugh at that, you mother. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to wish everybody a happy birthday, or a happy Mother's Day. And I guess if it's your birthday, I'd like to wish you a happy yeah, I'm birthday, too. Well, uh, we went to the casino today, and... Nobody lost their shirt, but as you can see, Homer lost part of his shorts, pants. <laughs> his overalls started to fall down. That's a little gambling joke if you ever gamble too much. Today, I got me a fancy Carlos Bakery from the ship that Aunt Connie won in a fancy cooking contest while she was out moving around the Caribbean, or Caribbean if you prefer. She doesn't hang out in the, with us Hillbill Estate again, or she goes with them fancy ones. Carlos is also, this sounds pretty Italian, and we're making some Italian food here with the lasagna. If you've been keeping track of Horatio and I, we've made the individual components or talked about growing the vegetables to bring together a lasagna. And unfortunately, we ain't together today, so I'm going to put this together myself. And since I didn't have Horatio, he's the smart one, today I had to store bought some stuff instead of making it from scratch. So you'll see I got me a little mozzarella cheese and ricotta, which you might have seen we made on the last show. I got me little peppers and tomatoes and some cabbage leaves that I pulled off the cabbage head earlier. Like we talked about growing them a couple episodes back. Now I didn't make that fancy, uh, Italian sausage like the old Horatio did, but I got some ground beef that I seasoned up and cooked, pre-cooked. That's about the only thing I pre-did, except I was going to make some fancy schmancy sauce, major sauce that they put in there, but since Aunt Connie had this garden variety chunky prego stuff, we're going to use that because I tried to get in the Armageddon room and get out the tomatoes in the big old tin cans to make some, but uh, Uncle Steve got after me and said I'd had to be in Costco there for a couple weeks getting that <laughs> stuff all bought back up if I did it. Uh, we watched with uh, Honey Home Stuff. We also had made some pasta from scratch, so I did do that from scratch today. Uh, as I was doing it, and rushed after I took us an extra hour and a half getting through Chicago today in the traffic, I was regretting my decision yesterday to not buy the box of lasagna noodles today. And I see I already forgot something, so we're going to improvise like we would on the homestead. This is going to be my rolling pin because I forgot to get up in there and get one. And this is going to be my rolling pad. So the first thing is, if you watched our uh, noodle making show, we made some noodles from scratch. Basically a little bit of flour, olive oil, and kind of going across the camera. And then uh, we put some olive oil water. Uh, I also put some of this here Italian pizza seasoning up in there, like we did on the last one since my homesteader said she liked it so much. I figured I'd try and recreate some of those noodles I'm going to roll them out fresh for you right here live on the show. And I don't know. So 
I mixed this up about an hour ago, and uh, Aunt Connie was going to whip me with the rolling pin. <laughs> there, Aunt Connie. I whipped this up an hour ago. If you listen to our show on noodle making, Horatio said it's always best. He puts about two cups. His paw is about a cup of uh, flour, so he dug his big old paws down in my homesteader's flour, made two cups of flour. He added some uh, eggs and water and a little bit of salt. Uh, to this, I also added olive oil, and like I said, that their Italian seasoning. I'm going to come up here. You can kind of see the specks of Italian seasoning right there in the dough. Oh, yeah. And this probably a little bit more pliable. I probably could have put some more uh, flour in there or not as much uh, liquid stuff. Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to take olive this. Olive oil. <laughs> olive oil, yeah. Uncle Steve took the top of the olive oil on me that I hadn't put on all the way. He's going to pick it up. Oh, he said, no. man, if you leave it like this, we're going to be in trouble. Now, as many of you probably know, when you're rolling stuff, adding a little bit of extra flour helps keep it from sticking. I like to pat mine on both sides so it don't stick to the surface, nor does it stick right there to the rolling pin. This is a great rolling pin, that kind of I bet Uncle Steve caught a couple of lumps with this once or twice. I've seen him get in trouble for today twice. But we had a great day at the casino celebrating Mother's Day this weekend. And uh, for all you mothers out there, I hope you're having a great Mother's Day weekend. Enjoying yourself a little bit of kid and grandkid time. Even in these times where you may not be able to see each other in person as much. Maybe across the internet or the world wide webs and so i'm rolling this out in a kind of big flat noodle bigger than you might normally see in a lasagna uh, i'm going to cut it up and i'm also going to do the trick that whole ratio taught us to make it even thinner which i could probably get it thinner but i'm running out of cutting board so i'm going to cut a little off here So I've got more room on the cutting board, and I'm getting a more rectangular noodle, so I can roll it thinner, because I had a little bit more dough than would fit up on my cutting board. Rolling it out, and now to make this, I got it pretty thin, but you might want to need it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, clench your pearls, we dropped them. <laughs> That's all right, my homesteader. But as you can see, may have seen, if we weren't too busy listening to the sound, I put a little flour in there, like this. I don't know why I keep putting that top back on. This is the first time I did it, actually. So I sprayed a little flour on it, folded it over, and that way I can roll it twice as thin and it won't stick to each other. That was a great lesson that that there Horatio taught me. And he said he learned that from watching the show on how they made tin foil. So I got my first noodle rolled out. I'll fold that up and set it to the side. And then I'm going to do some more. Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Well, I'm going to roll this one out too. That will probably be enough to get started on that. Now, I like to just put my hand on top. Some of them got those rollers that you hold on and go like this. But if we hadn't got the thing, I would have used the jar works. Some people use like a wine bottle if you drink wine. I know before I've used glasses. Make sure you don't use the octagonal ones. They leave little thump, 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 thump <laughs> marks up there in the noodles. So I just roll my hands over it real quick. Back and forth, rolling it out, it's getting a little sticky. Put on some more flour. Roll it on both sides so it's not very sticky. And I'm getting it rolled out. Now what I think I was saying is I, I'm trying to make these noodles, I'm gonna make these noodles a little wider than you might see traditional lasagna noodles. Cause occasionally, especially when he's having to do it all by himself, while Horatio's sitting back at the homestead working to death, taking it easy on him, <laughs> then uh, 
I'm going to make them wider so that I cover the whole layer at one time. Now, I don't know how that will work out, but we're going to find out because I cheated a little. Oops, I shouldn't tell you that. I cheated a little and started one in the oven uh, before this. And so I did make noodles in that one that will basically cover a whole layer. And so we're going to see. I don't never knew why, except maybe the boxes. They couldn't fit the boxes on the shelf is why they cut those noodles into smaller pieces. And I think three layers of pasta will be good. I'm going to reclaim this stuff I had before. You can do that. If you got a little extra you had to cut off for one reason or another, you can always put it back into what you're rolling out. Now, I really like this here pasta making. It's almost like pie crust making, and it's one of my favorite things is making pie crust. It is one of my favorite things to make. But I quit eating the wheat and the sugar and the flour, and so I don't get to do this very often. So I'm really having a good time making me some noodles and rolling it out, because it's partner like pie crust, just a slightly different recipe. You might have seen that we did the pie crust over at Handgun Hawks and Hannah Homesteaders. Uh, when we were making some pot pies for my homesteader and some, uh, what are those things called? Stuffed peppers. Now they've been talking all weekend about making some stuffed peppers. You can see I got some peppers here. I got some extras and when I heard them talking about, I set them back so that we could have some stuffed peppers tomorrow, maybe for breakfast. Breakfast? Yes! Yeah, with our eggs. I gotta get you on the road, my homesteader, before the sun goes down on the west side, of, east side of Michigan. It gets right cold on that sunrise side. Lately, it was something cold today. Yeah. A shout out to Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. <laughs> Hannah, homesteader, and handgun hog. Got to go boating with them. We finally got the second try. We got the boat away from the dock, finally. And I had to come consult with Uncle Steve, the mechanical genius. We got going, it was going all right. Little bit to the right, little bit to the left, little bit straight. Handgun hawk was lining it all up with the tree down there and driving. Then all of a sudden we were going in circles. <laughs> and I'm like, huh. I didn't think he forgot how to drive right in the middle of riding on the boat. So I figured I'd give her a try. Well, it seems the control arm, according to Uncle Steve, the mechanical genius, might have slipped a little bit when we were turning hard right so that it never go back to the left. So we were out in the middle of the lake, and I had to kind of keep making circles and coming back, and it would go out that way and go to it. It was a mess. It took us about 45 minutes just to get back up to the dock, and we only went out for five. <laughs> so, that's my layering noodles right there. I'm just going to roll out three. I probably, if I was really smart, like I claim to be sometimes, I got this beautiful cookware I'm using from Aunt Sharon. Since she's the sister what couldn't be here today, we thought we'd incorporate Aunt Sharon into the show. And then I, I wanted to make sure my noodles would cover the whole thing. I had to learn to do this with pie crust because I used to eyeball them and look at them and I'm like, oh, that'll work, and then I'd get in and be a little short. So that big one works, and this thin one, this not so wide one, will fit perfectly right in the bottom. So we got good noodle coverage right there for our lasagna. We're going to take that, put it over here. We're going to work on the next bit that I'm going to roll up if I don't grab my bowl. Take a little ricotta cheese. This is a 32 ounce thing. There's probably recipes all over for this lasagna, but uh, I didn't look any up. I'm just going to give it a try on my own. So we're going to have three different lasagnas today. There's one in the oven and two I'm going to put together here. <laughs> live on the show, whoop, whoop. and wouldn't you know it, 
I didn't get me anything to stir with like a fork. You need a fork or a spatula? A fork or a spatula? Thanks, Whoa. Aunt Connie. You <laughs> gotta be careful, Aunt Connie, get too close with your spatula. I remember some days back in the day. There was one time, now Aunt Connie and Uncle Steve, they had themselves a chicken farm, what with about 20,000 chickens, and they raised eggs. Well, they raised chickens, the chickens laid eggs. And uh, I remember being out there with Tommy. Oh. Are we still live? We're still live and seeing Homer's hand. Wahahaha. <laughs> and we got mom's finger too. <laughs> you have to know I am not usually the cameraman. No. We need our regular cameraman back in Michigan. We're gonna do some training. If, she, if the cameraman were in Michigan, we'd still wouldn't have him here because they'd be a couple miles away across Lake Michigan. <laughs> Well, that's right. We're in Bolingbrook, <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> You're not the only person my homesteader has said with my traveling be home, between my home in Texas and my home in Michigan that they never know where I'm at. <laughs> Some days I don't either. Uh, this is a little, I just picked the Italian pizza season because it was easy. Usually you can put things like basil, rosemary, oregano, garlic, that kind of stuff. I like a really garlicky sauce. I'm gonna put some more garlic up in here. This is minced dried garlic. And you know what? I think, now that I think about it, I even saw some fresh garlic mashed in the, what is that thing that keep the ice box? I, I saw some in there I probably should have got out. Now don't, I sent Aunt Connie on the air cause she don't like spicy stuff. But she didn't want to see me putting these here crushed rust peppers in. And then we get that. Uh, bay leaf sometimes. I'm just gonna set a couple in there. Look at that. This is like TV show magic. Thank you, Aunt Connie. Ah, ah. Uh oh. It might really be stuck. It is stuck. <sighs> Can you get that for me, Aunt Connie? Look at that. It's magic. She got it. We're going to make this really garlicky with some more garlic. Oh, you can never go wrong with too much garlic. Thank you, thank you, Connie and Connie. So we put a little garlic and some herbs up in there, as you saw. Uh, usually people put salt in their ricotta cheese, too, and uh, crushed pepper, but I didn't really do that. Got me a fancy spoon here to stir it with. Going to get it all mixed in. Now I have found that when I'm doing the ricotta cheese, it's somewhat bland. So if you like really to taste your herbs, my experience has been to really put a lot in there. Uh, this with any kind of stuffed noodles or stuff, stuffed shells, that kind of stuff. And uh, I can see <laughs> I like stuff with a lot of spices in it. This is probably, if you like mediocre spices, gonna be about right. And I don't know how closely you were watching. Looked like I put a lot up in there, but I'm gonna go for some more. Uh, if you don't have, if you have people that don't really like spicy stuff, just put a little bit of crushed red peppers like I did. If I were eating with a group that really likes spicy stuff, I'd really put a lot more in there and make a spicy lasagna. But we're going just for nicely herbed. So we got the ricotta cheese. I usually like to mix this up a little bit early in the process, sometimes uh, maybe an hour or two in advance, and that lets those dried herbs start to soak into the cheese and spread the flavors all over. And uh, in about four minutes, 30 seconds, we're gonna see that other, that timer go off in the kitchen, and we're gonna have a fresh lasagna coming out that we're gonna let set for a little bit so we can maybe try it here on the air. I pre-cut these peppers, just went around the stems, cut them in half, and then I pulled out that there uh, inside stuff, put it in the composting pile. The pits. Okay. <laughs> the what? The, the seeds, the, the seeds. The seeds, yeah, the pits, the seeds, all that stuff. Now. If Horatio was here, these already be cut even before I looked at them because that cat is fast with the knife, let me tell you. But uh, I thought it would be a nice uh, bit to add these 
some cut up peppers and uh, that'll give it a little bit of extra chunkiness in our lasagna. You could add these or not if you wanted to. And uh, so I'm just cutting these up. I, uh, you saw that first one I did with the shiny side up. This one I'm gonna do with the shiny side down because it often allows me to cut better through the outside stem. And I was having a little problem when you get that mushy side underneath. So I'm just dicing these into a rough dice. And we had the most amazing dinner tonight. Uncle Steve went out there on the grill and he grilled us up some Coco Viennas and some hamburgers. And so we had hamburgers and hot dogs on the All-American Favorite Grill. And uh, so with that, we had some onions, which leads me to my next ingredient. And I'll use some of the onions and kind of, kind of chop them up in the dicer shrimp or cheddar shredder. And so we got some nice diced onions we're gonna put in there. And uh, gotta forget when I'm on TV, I can't lick my fingers when I'm cooking. <laughs> but uh, if you ever come to my house and it wasn't made on a live show, you would have just got some licked off onion fingers there. I also tried this in the lasagna that's in the oven that I haven't tried before. Look at this. Now, Aunt Connie, she is known for her kitchen gadgets. And this is one of the favorites I learned. Actual tomato knife. Got tomatoes right on the side. Got the shredded edge. Makes it a little easier to cut. Well, I didn't do so good on that one now, did I, Uncle Steve? You'll get there. Never cut towards yourself. When Only when demonstrating on TV, you notice I'm stopping a good safe way back from my hand. But I want to show you how neat that tomato knife was. One of the fancy gadgets found here at the Aunt Connie and Uncle Steve, the mechanical genius home. There's even a fork on the end of it. That's, you know what that fork's for? You know what that fork's for, my homesteader? Tell me, son. No, guess. <laughs> To poke you with? To poke you with. <laughs> I think it's made, like you said, to poke uh, through the skin. If you have a particularly tough skin tomato. I knew you knew the answer. I think you can poke through the skin. I think it's to take the plug out. Take the plug out? Oh, you cut those things out before you eat them? Oh. So we're going to try it as a plug remover. Oh, maybe after it's done. Well, we're going to slice some more. We're going to try it as a plug remover. Now I got all excited about trying that. I can't hardly sit still enough to cut. Oh my goodness. All right, so we're gonna slice up this tomato. And you think it's for cutting the plug out, huh? You gonna come on air and help me figure out? <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> we're trying, we keep trying to get in kind of, you know, Hannah, she said she didn't want to come on and she was so wonderful helping me out in that show at her house where we're making food for mom. Look, that does work for getting a plug out. But if you're Homer and you see a fork and there's tomatoes. Just watch your work. tongue on that sharp edge. <laughs> that's why I got good away from it. I'm gonna shut this here, uh, hit the stop there. I don't know how many times I gotta hit stop. Oh, we may need two. Almost catastrophe here. <laughs> it wasn't hot, was it? Well, I'll set that down. Set that down. No, set it down. All right, there. Now, I'm gonna get this other one out of the way. Let's see. Let's see how we're doing here. Let's see how we're doing Timer stuff. We set that right there, and then we're gonna put it back on. Can you put that back on bait for me? You bet. Well, here's what we got from the first lasagna. 
Mmm, look at all that cheese and tomatoes. And Luscious. You, <laughs> and you can see it bubbling around the outside edges. Yeah, look at that. Uh, probably if Horatio was here, we'd have us a fancy dancy timer. <laughs> uh, not a timer, but a temperature gauge. What do you call those? Thermometer. And we'd use that there thermometer to test the center of this and make sure it's melted all the way through. We're just going to let that set for a little bit. Always a good idea with lasagna. The cheese will start to set up and you, I won't say eliminate, but greatly reduce the probability of burning the snot out of the top of your mouth when you cut into that <laughs> cheese. Although Homer usually still bites into it and gets a little joy out of jumping around with no skin on the roof of his mouth. <laughs> that is something special, let me tell you. So we got the tomato nut going it. here. Works good. Mm -hmm. It works fantastic. And look at, I also, you know, in case you were worried, I know some of you guys don't know about me out there and my tens of viewers, but uh, I should have used, I thought I used the towel to clean off my hand. But I do want you to know, I didn't lick it off on the show like I would normally. <laughs> so, we got some tomatoes cut up. I think I'm gonna do one more tomato. Because we're making two more lasagnas, and you'll see why here in a second. Two more? And in case you all didn't see the second beautiful dish, and that wonderful holding is also from Aunt Sharon. Another way she's joining us from Texas on the show today since she can't be here with us on Mother Day weekend. So there we go. We got another tomato cut up. Let's see. I think I got almost everything ready to go. The last thing is, now, Homer, he prefers his cheese not the pre shredded kind because they put anti-taking agents on it. If you like, if you like the pre-shredded kind, you can buy that. Sometimes I use a shredder, sometimes I use a tomato knife, and other times I just use a normal knife. And I'm going to slice this somewhat thin so that, as you all know, the lasagna is just a bunch of layers. We're gonna make some cheese layers, some ricotta cheese layers, some mater layers, some pepper layers, some onion layers, some meat layers, noodle layers, and for those of you who are staying away from the flour and gluten, some cabbage layers. So that's why we're gonna make two lasagnas so we can have one without any wheat in it for folks who are a little bit crazy like Homer or folks who aren't crazy like Homer and still don't eat wheat. So, we got this cheese almost cut up, and we got another one. I don't know about you all out there, but when I get to this last slice and I really want it to, I go crosswise on it. Instead of trying to make it another slice, I just make some thin pieces. And that reminds me of this other lasagna over here when we had our hot dogs and hamburgers. We had a little Kobe cheese left over, and it went right smack dab in the middle of that lasagna. So you can sneak some surprises in your homemade foods for your guests. And apparently Homer not pushing down hard enough on that plastic to cut it open now. There we go. Whoop, whoop. We got some more cheese cutting going on. And then we are going to start to layer our lasagnas and probably even going to get out a couple, three plates after we start layering them and uh, maybe let somebody, whoever's willing to come on camera, Uncle Steve has done it before, and uh, in the background we can listen to the other two folks taste test without them getting on camera if they're not in there today. So. Got some cheese cut up. So the basic makings of the lasagna are now ready to go in the pan. We're gonna put this together first. We're gonna do the noodle lasagna. The reason I'm making this one smaller <laughs> is uh, I already got one full lasagna that's got the noodles in it, so we're gonna use this fancy dish. We're gonna make the noodle lasagna in here. 
And uh, since I can see we're a little too far away, to really good to see what's going on, we're gonna pull a seat right up. How's that, my homesteader? Much better. Much better. Look at all the fantastic colors we got going on here for our lasagna. Okay, I like to start so it makes it even harder to clean with just a little bit of sauce in the bottom. And I find that bobbles underneath of the bottom layer so that nothing really sticks too bad to the pan unless you burn the snot out of it. And since <laughs> I'm making two, I'm just gonna whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, baby, so I was gonna try them in there too. That might be a great surprise. I've heard whoever gets the bay leaf, look at I made myself a fresh pot of coffee in a French press to drink during the show. Then I forgot all about it. Hopefully it's cooled down enough. And this is my fancy Aunt Connie cup. <laughs> For Chicago. I've seen these at Handgun Hawk and Hannah's Place. And I've seen them here, and I love drinking now. Thank you for opening your home. Does tonight. that stand for the Chicago Cubs? <laughs> or the Bears, or the Sox. Oh, no. It's the Cubs. For Cincinnati. <laughs> no way. Or when, or when Hannah took them to Chrysler. Yeah, Chrysler. Well, there's that Connie. She came on. Woohoo! She came out here with me. Look at that. Oh, I, I love it. Her and Uncle Steve, they let me go into work with them and drive them nuts here. You know, now that I'm in retirement, uh, I've been looking for Jones and for things to do because I stop by the homestead every once in a while and get everything stirred up, and then Horatio runs me off. So sometimes he runs me off down here to Chicago to work with Aunt Connie and Uncle Steve. So I'm just going to put this noodle right in the bottom there. It sticks up a little bit, but I think that's okay by me. Next, I'd like to put some ricotta cheese. And this one, Now that first one I did has a whole tub of ricotta cheese in it and one pound of uh, mozzarella. On these two, I'm going to split the... Uh, ricotta cheese between the two of them now uh, you can use many layering materials I really like the uh, cabbage you could use Napa cabbage this is green cabbage you could alternate with red cabbage or purple cabbage you can use eggplant as we talked about zucchini uh, but I was in a cabbage mood so that's what I'm using today now this might be a little more difficult to uh, spread your ricotta because it's in smaller leaves. As you see, I didn't do a very good job of uh, tearing it off in whole leaves. So we're gonna get a little bit of that in there. I'm gonna add some mozzarella in the places where I might have missed with the ricotta. And if you're vegetarian on this one, you could completely leave the meat out. I am not a vegetarian, so I'm gonna add meat to both of them but I do avoid the wheat. Uh, and so I'm going to put the um, cabbage leaves in there instead of the wheat made noodles. Now uh, you can, I guess the point I wanna make is whatever your dietary choices or requirements are, you can make it to your liking uh, just by putting in different ingredients and you can still come out with a really good lasagna there no matter what. It is that you like unless you don't like lasagna then it'd be hard to come out with the lasagna that you like we'll put a couple tomatoes in as a layer here and there on that one I just put them on the top I'm doing a little experiment as long as I got some <clears throat> willing participants would you like a little lasagna Uncle Steve oh yeah oh yeah oh would I oh would I <laughs> <laughs> And uh, just in case Tommy watches this, I know that's his favorite joke. And <laughs> Uncle Steve loves it too. I'm going to put another layer of noodle. Now, some people are very particular about the order of things. You might notice I don't put everything in the same order. 
I'm running a little low on Prego because I couldn't get into Armageddon room to get a big sauce made. Plus, we were having too much fun giving a little uh, visit to the casinos today. So I didn't get to get, make me a full-on sauce. Woo! Don't leave that in there. We were looking for something to cover the first lasagna with while it was baking. It got a little brown as a result of not covering it. But I, I couldn't find a tin foil, and my homesteader fortunately stopped me from using the plastic wrap. <laughs> we would have had some funny stuff. It would have been sticky. It would have been sticky. These bay leaves might be a little much, but what the heck, it's Mother's Day. We might as well go all the way. So we're going to put some bay leaves in there. And uh, a little more ricotta cheese. You can't have, in my opinion, too much cheese in any dish, really. And if you don't have a dish and you want a lot of cheese, that's still okay, my homer. So I'm going to put some ricotta cheese on there. Another thing about mixing this up early, the ricotta cheese, would be it also helps to uh, make it soft. Creamy. Creamy, so that it's a little easier to spread around. Uh, as you can see, this one's a little bit sticky, and it's not spread really easy. You almost got it there, Homer. <laughs> Look, Aunt kind of gave me a little, uh, I was 20-something years old before I recognized this was called Parmesan, not Parmesan cheese. <laughs> I pronounced it that way for a long time. I think you might have heard Horatio and I talking about it. Uh, that's always good on there. That was a Thompson pronunciation. The Thompson pronunciation. Grandpa Thompson, Grandma Thompson. Those folks were around when I was a kid. And we learned to say that word that way. And we learned some other great nuances. I got to tell you how grateful I am for the way my folks brought me up. And I got to say right here on air, Ma, I have really appreciated in this week, last week, multiple times, how many things, different things you did with us giving me the ability to look at things in a different light, a different way, and have different open perspectives that have helped me a lot to be at peace and have some joy. And don't tell Aunt Connie I didn't take that thing out with a fancy fork. <laughs> I didn't remove the plug on that one. It's almost as if she can't hear me right on the other side of that wall. So there we go. Got a little color on that layer, some more onions. Some more onions in there. Onions are good. Oh, I almost forgot. What a travesty for a cat bragging about not being a vegetarian. I almost forgot the meat in that layer, Uncle Steve. That would have been silly. You know, one more spice that may be good in the cabbage lasagna would be caraway seed. Caraway seeds. I got a story about caraway seeds. <laughs> Old Mother Hubbard went to her cupboard and saw some caraway seeds laying there. Old Mother Hubbard got quite a fright. She thought that a mouse had been here. <laughs> Who was that, Old Mother Hubbard? That was my homesteader. <laughs> my homesteader. The, the caraway seeds got out on her counter and for a little while she thought she had a friendly mouse visiting her house. But in her opinion, there is no friendly mouse. They can, they look wonderful outside, don't they, my home The only kind of mouse I like is a dead one. <laughs> you can see them a lot better when you're standing on the table. Yes. <laughs> you got a better bird's eye view of those mice when you're standing on the table. There have been times when I've chased a mouse with a broom. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then one time I couldn't get him, so he was still attached to the trap so oh I, so i put a bowl over the top of him i thought i'm gonna smother that sucker <laughs> wow <laughs> but he You're stayed really <laughs> 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 wow well we know that there's a certain emotional attachment between my homesteader and mice in her house and we also have learned that they do not suffocate under bowls. <laughs> so, we are just having us a blast here in Bowling Brook today. I can't think of any place I'd rather be. 
And I think my little caraway seeds uh, story got in the way of letting you know how much I appreciate you, Mom. And uh, I know sometimes it's tough being a parent, and I know sometimes it's tough being a child. But I want to let you know that uh, most parents do their very best to raise you up the best way they know how. And uh, that hopefully if you have some uh, grief or consternation between you and your parents, that today and any day would be really a great day to start letting some of that go and letting their love flow in your family again. Because it is really great and I am so happy that especially in this last year, I've had an opportunity to spend more mom, time with my mom than I had probably in the last 20 years. Both my mas, uh, my mom up in Tawas, and my mom sitting here with me today. So I want to thank both of you for all the patience you had with me in these last 53 years on and off, and let you know how wonderful it is, everything I've learned from both of you. Okay. And my aunts, too. <laughs> Oh, and there's Uncle Steve, the mechanical genius. <laughs> you learned a lot from that man. <laughs> yeah, I know it's Mother's Day, so I'll just let you know he's a real mother, and we're going to celebrate together. With him. <laughs> hey, would you like to put these in the oven? What? Oh, I? <laughs> I am going to go put these in the oven. As you can see on this, I probably shorted myself a little bit there with not enough ricotta cheese. It would be a really good idea to cover this up, and uh, but I'm out. So put some parmesan on there. Parmesan. He did. I'm gonna make do with what I got. Uh, I haven't met a, a pan full of cheese and vegetables and meat that I haven't liked in a very long time. The thing about parmesan, the cabbage will give you a lot of moisture. Oh, Consequently, yeah. the parmesan will soak up that moisture. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> not the whole thing. Oh, not the whole thing. It'll be. <laughs> It'll be cotton mouth. If, if I put that much cheese in there, it'll stay with me for a week or yeah. two. So there we go. I'm going to go hide for a second. Oh. Uncle Steve, have you got a good PG-friendly joke for us? <laughs> no. 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 Well, I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. I'm going to slide these in the oven. We'll worry about a timer a little bit later. Uh, it's usually best to put tin foil, not plastic wrap, on top of your lasagnas. It keeps the cheese from getting burned up. Uh, keep them in the oven. We did 350 on this for 50 minutes, usually around an hour. Look at that. I got sauce left. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But as soon as we eat some, somebody remind me to go put that sauce in one of those lasagnas. So, I can see we've been eating too many hot dogs today because <laughs> I forgot to get us some forks. Been got, done, got used to eating with my hands. There's some over here. So there's the ricotta. I can tell from looking at this, probably could have let it stay in the oven a little bit longer to melt that cheese better. Let me put it back in. We can, that's a wonderful thing. My favorite is lasagna. A couple days later warmed up. Because that cheese melts better and better each time. It smells so good. And you can see my noodles are a little bit thick in there. It's falling apart. Sorry, folks. My noodles are a little thick. I did not use a rolling pin uh, to roll them. I just pressed them out with my hand originally because I cut my shelf short on time. So... I think this is the part of the show where I'm going, oh, we do got forks. I'm going to clear off some room. I'm going to take the camera. Okay. I'm going to take the camera. Ready to drop that thing. And I'm going to let them tell me whether my lasagna turned out good. Remember, this is stuff you can make from scratch. I just happened to be on the road and not able to make it from scratch today. And so... Look, this organization is going to take five minutes just to get to the right place. Well, 
I want to say thank you very much for opening your home and being the guinea pigs on my completely unscripted lasagna. Live here on the Homesteaders. Homesteading how to, humorously, I hope, although without Horatio, I don't tell nearly as many jokes. <laughs> tell me what you think. All right. It's so good that you're speechless. Would you like some of this? Oh, would I? Oh, would I? Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't you? Oh, wouldn't who wouldn't want some of that stuff? I would suspect. Pretty good. I would suspect the noodles are a little bit thick, but other than that, it should be all right, maybe. Real good. Homer. Oh yeah, and I forgot. I know I like to be called Homer the Homesteader, but Aunt Connie calls me. What is it? Let me turn the camera back on you. Homer the Homeless. Oh, yeah, because he's never staying in one spot long. <laughs> it's Homer the Homeless. I got mixed up. Aunt Connie, Uncle Steve the Mechanical Genius, and Ma Homesteader. I'm going to let them get to their eating. I'm going to put this down in here. Got to put my battery pack in my pouch. And I just wanted to say peace, love, and togetherness. Wait, Ma Homesteader's got it. We'll let her do it. Peace, love, and togetherness. Just thought you'd like an update on the property. You gotta get that. Nah, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have to train her up. Just thought you'd like an update on the property.